John and Kate plus eight. Why would anyone watch a house filled with young, noisy kids? I have always been such a TLC stan. For me, the appeal of John and Kate plus eight was literally because they had eight kids, because what the hell is even that? So let's get into the first episode of the Dark Side of the 2000s, John and Kate plus eight edition. John, Colin, and Hannah are the only ones from the Goslin family to participate in the documentary, and later on, you'll understand why. Right off the bat, we start with John coming onto the screen and saying, I'm John Goslin, and in the 2000s, I was the second most hated person in America under OJ Simpson. Be for real, John. So John grew up in the suburbs of Reading, Pennsylvania, and in 1997, at 19 years old, he and Kate met at a work picnic, and things just kind of spiraled from there. They hit it off, they got on real well, and shortly after, they got married. This is insane to me. Because I just know if I married the person that I was in love with at 19, my life would be in shambles. I would be a hot mess right now. So thank God that didn't happen. Both of them were aware and they fully knew that they wanted a big family, but Kate had fertility issues. So that kind of, I wouldn't say it even got in the way really because they didn't miss a beat. They still found a way to get pregnant, obviously. The odds of getting pregnant on IVFN were not that great. So they actually used IUI, which increases the chance of multiple births. Shortly after they started this process, they actually welcomed twins, Maddie and Kara in 2000, but they wanted more kids. This was not enough for them. So they decided to give IUI another go when the twins were three. They got pregnant again, but this time it was with six. To me, it seems like Kate always kind of knew that she wanted to be famous, and now she had an avenue of doing so with her huge family, with her unusual family. This to me was only confirmed because during her pregnancy with the sex tuplets, her or someone close to her, although I think it's her, they reached out to Al Walentis, who was a writer for a local paper, to follow her pregnancy. And these sex tuplets were born in 2004, three boys and three girls, Aiden, Colin, Joel, and Leah, Hannah, and Alexis. Now with a family of 10, Kate and John needed to find new ways to make money and support the family because that's a lot of people to take care of. So John had actually lost his job due to the pregnancy, so they were essentially relying on government assistance and community support to keep everyone housed, fed, and safe. Their church and their community basically supported them financially and physically. And I feel like this is just a testament to how community really rallies around you, even when you bring things upon yourself, because y'all now have eight kids and you need a lot of support. In fact, people from their church signed up on a rotating basis. We had a team of 75 volunteers come in our house for feedings and diaper changes. They were really struggling financially, and at some point, John did go back to work and Kate, again, she realized that she had an opportunity to capitalize off of her unusual family. So when a network called her up, wanting to offer the family a documentary deal, she called John and they accepted the offer to do a one hour documentary for Discovery Health called Surviving Sex Tuplets and Twins in 2006. At this point, the twins are six and the sex tuplets are two. Now, this documentary was the highest rated documentary Discovery Health had ever done. So about 14 months later, they were approached again to do a follow-up. And that documentary had higher ratings than the original one. So this is when executives and Kate were like, mm, we've got something here. Months after the second documentary was aired, Discovery Health hit them up again and was like, hey, we want to film a reality show of your family. They actually called Kate, so then Kate called John, and John was like, oh my What's a reality show? <laughs> this man is an icon. I feel like he's so unintentionally hilarious and I love it. It brought a lightness to the documentary that I think it really needed because a lot of heavy things are going to be discussed. So John and Kate Plus 8, as we know it, premiered in 2007. If you've never seen the show, don't. It's not worth watching at this point. But I will say it's basically just following the family, doing random activities, going on vacation, and their day-to-day -day lives as well. The intrigue was obviously the fact that they had eight kids and two adults. So like, how would the kids react to these consistent outings? But more so, how John and Kate would interact with one another. Kate was definitely a dictator, in my opinion. Whenever I watched the show, that's how I saw her. Hello, I need your help. Go to 11. No, I can't. She had the Karen haircut to match, the soccer mom haircut, the get off my lawn haircut, the I'm gonna call the police if you're doing a barbecue at the park type of haircut. You know what I mean. What really drew people to the show was the dynamic between me and Kate. It was the good cop, bad cop. In the documentary, Kate is described as an alpha female, but to me, it never gave that. It never gave that. 
To me, it always just gave controlling and miserable and Colin confirmed my suspicion and my perception of her by saying that she's very determined and she's also very controlling. She always gets what she wants. John was belittled and berated by Kate constantly about what he did, about how he interacted with the kids, all the way down to what he wore. I can't wear a polo shirt. It's ugly. Girl, with hair like that, I just know, I just know that you are not telling anybody anything about appearances. Be for real, please, I beg you. But in this documentary, it's made super clear that the show was not at all reality. The producers dreamed up situations that would be stressful, high anxiety, or even sweet to film, and would be entertaining to viewers. So everything is mapped out and they just kind of sent the family in. This to me is a, it's a little bit fucked up because it's weird for adults to be sitting around plotting and planning on how they can create situations that would cause kids anguish. Like they had all the power to make the kids day really enjoyable or make it really miserable for the viewers entertainment for money making purposes. But also I think these people are forgetting or maybe they just don't care that in the grand scheme of things, these little outings that they are planning to film and make money off of comprise these kids childhoods. So this show during its first season premiere did even better than the previously aired documentaries. And again, mind you, those already rated really, really high. So Discovery then realized like we could make way more money if we move you over to the legendary TLC as that was their family friendly channel. And this is when I personally started watching the show. So January 2008 is when their new season aired on TLC. It very quickly became TLC's highest rated show. This is when the family began raking in the big bucks, making about $25,500 per episode on top of Your travel's paid for, you're getting per diem, you know, you're doing Good Morning America, that's getting paid. Your incentives are huge. Now that's a lot of money, like even now I think that would be a lot of money, but I think in the early 2000s, like that was a lot, a lot of money, especially for a family that was struggling financially before this. The switch over to TLC allowed their audience to go from 20 million households to 90 million households. That is insane. This quickly allowed them to become one of America's most talked about families. As their fame grew though, so did their troubles. Tabloids really started to get in their asses. They just basically began to say that their lives off camera is very different than what they're showing on TV, just drumming up any lies that they could to also make money. So everybody is just looking to make money off of everybody, but ultimately at the expense of these children who nobody is really thinking about. Becoming famous is dangerous business. As season three and season four were filming and airing, that is when John realized that this is something way bigger than just filming a TV show at home. Like, sir, you are making hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars at this point. You have camera crews constantly around you. You are being paraded around on press tours, press conferences, and you are only now realizing that this is something bigger than filming a TV show at your house. I just feel like sometimes men need to think before they speak. You, you're not observant at all. You just didn't notice that because Kate, she noticed. She noticed real fast. So by this time, when John is just now realizing they have something big on their hands, Kate has already taken full advantage of it. She started writing books. She started doing solo paid appearances. She went on book tours. She was doing everything to make more money. As season three and four are filming and airing, this is when the bigger money started to come into play, right? $25,500 per episode, that was already big to them, but now we're talking millions. I believe that after their skyrocketed success, other women realized that they could potentially follow the same fate, that they could use their kids to make a lot of money, such as Octomom, and I think now the increase of family channels where you have parents always having the camera in their kid's face and using their kids as the source of making money and supporting the household. Which is dangerous for a number of reasons, but primarily because it doesn't prioritize the children and it doesn't allow them to just be children. Everything that they do is watched and monitored and you're putting them out there on the internet to be susceptible to a bunch of creeps all the time. It's disgusting. But obviously filming the show, the constant travel, all of the things that come with filming a reality TV show that is wildly successful, it's affecting the kids. But that would ruin the image that TLC and Kate worked so hard to put out there about the Gosselin family, so it's never really reflected on the show. It's never really addressed actually until much later when all of the blame is put onto only one of the children. 
Now, when watching this show as a child myself, I never considered how weird it would be to grow up with cameras around you constantly, with millions of millions of millions of people watching your every move. To grow up essentially being entertainment for adults and essentially never have a fighting chance at a quote unquote normal life. But I was a child, so of course I didn't think about these things, but I'm just like, how are the adults who are watching this not thinking about this? Colin himself says that- I don't really have any clear memories of before the cameras were there. You know, they were always there. I think that this is just so sad and so exploitative. John says that in February of 2007, We filmed every single day except for two. There were times that the kids didn't want to film. There were times that John didn't want to film either, but that was never an option. Kate and TLC were the only ones who truly wanted to film all of the time. And obviously TLC wants to film all the time because they have a personal investment in making money. And Kate, the same thing. It seemed like she was more focused on making money and her newfound fame and her career rather than the well-being of her children and the health of her marriage. So in August of 2008, TLC flew the family to film a vow renewal on the couple's 10th wedding anniversary. I look forward to many, many more years of love and happiness as we follow God's lead together. If it's 10 years, then that means a year after they met, they got married. I, I want to sit here and be like, I would never do that. But me, I'm a little bit Delulu in love. So if I was really in love with someone, I would probably marry them less than a year after being together so let me not speak too much on them so their vow renewal episode airs as the season four finale in march of 2009 everyone who watched the show and was an avid watcher walks away believing that the family is amazing their marriage is strong solid they're locked in they're together till the end and their eight kids are super duper happy dude we're freaking like this dude like this like locked in like but then shit hits the fan only weeks after the episode airs, John is photographed by a paparazzi leaving a nightclub with a local school teacher. John said that he was real scared. He had never been followed by paparazzi like that, especially not in his hometown. News spread like wild fire. There are certain things in the tabloids that sell. Everybody was shocked. And it was clear that a lot of, if not everything, that we had been shown on TV about this family had been a lie. Tabloids began circulating all types of cheating rumors about John, but also about Kate. I remember being in the aisles, like when you check out the grocery store and you know they had all the tabloid magazines. I think they still have them, but I don't know if anybody reads those anymore. But I remember at the time, because I watched the show, I'd be there with my parents and I'm like just skimming the title. Because if I pick it up, they're gonna be like, what do you know about that? And then we get in trouble for watching things that I probably shouldn't have been watching because I was also watching Jersey Shore and stuff like that. But anyways, back to the point, I remember reading one of them and I think it was People. It said that Kate was cheating on John with her bodyguard. Where do y'all come up with this stuff? Basically, if it was a juicy headline that would make the money get people enthralled in reading the magazine or clicking on the story, they were printing it. Now the real hot juicy tea that John spills is that at the time the picture was taken and released and the tabloids started printing all of these articles, they had already been separated for months. Mid season four, I was done. That's when like, our separation started. But they had kept up the appearance of the image for the sake of the show, the sake of their bag, basically. They didn't want to jeopardize that TLC money, so they were together on screen. There was a lot that we didn't talk about to anyone. They had been separated for quite some time, and John had actually moved out of the house literally right after they filmed their vow renewal in fall of 2008. They filmed it in August of 2008. The lovely happy couple of John and Kate plus eight breaking up was not in TLC's plan. So the network did what they could to make sure that the breakup wouldn't happen and also make sure that when it was time for the information to go public, they were in control of how that would be handled. At this point in the documentary, when hearing from everyone talk about the breakdown in the marriage and the divorce, no one had mentioned the kids or the well-being of the kids, which is alarming. Like two of their kids are eight, six of their kids are four. 
and they have been filming on these reality shows or having cameras around for a majority of their lives. No one was talking about how it was impacting them, how this potential separation is going to impact them. Their life has just been so chaotic, so tumultuous, and so far outside of the norm that their only real sense of stability were their parents and their parents being together and in the same household. So them breaking up or having cracks in the foundation of their marriage is only going to put stress on any sense of normalcy that these children have. But nobody talked about that. As all the rumors were going on, TLC played into it. They toyed with the public. They did not allow John or Kate to issue any sort of statement clarifying that they were separated or addressing any of the other many rumors that were out there at this point. Using all this speculation about the Goslin's marriage to encourage viewers to watch the show's upcoming fifth season. They were just trying to find a way to capitalize off of the pain of the family and just make as much money as possible. They didn't really care about John or Kate. Or the kids. In May of 2009, the season 5 premiere episode aired and it was the sex tuplet's fifth birthday. TLC had hyped up John's supposed infidelity and their troubled marriage so much that by the time the season aired, they had completely doubled their audience. The season 4 finale had 5 million viewers, but the season 5 premiere had 10 million viewers. People love the mess. It is me. I am people. I love the mess. The network really took their sweet time communicating what had actually gone down between the couple because they wanted to make more money. Everyone was tuning in almost religiously to see whether they're going to get divorced, are they going to reconcile, what happened, did John cheat? What is going on here? And everybody's going to stay tuned in because they want the tea. So finally, in episode 6, the show allows them to air that they are getting a divorce. Uh, Kate and I have decided to separate. But no one explicitly states why they're getting a divorce, either on the show at this time or in the Vice documentary. Like, nobody says what happened exactly. It just seems like John was really over it and not even over it because it's clear that he loves his kids and loved his kids at the time. I think he was just over Kate. The same day the separation episode airs, Kate files for divorce. In this episode, Kate makes her intentions crystal clear as far as the show is concerned. How does the show go on? The show must go on. Girl, 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 girl. Oh, girl this girl stop. is delusional. Miss Kate. Miss Karen. Miss Karen Kate. Maybe that was not a good time to say that out loud. Because I don't think anybody is expecting the show to go on if the parents are getting a divorce and you have eight kids. Nobody felt this way. Nobody felt that the show must go on except for Kate and TLC because they wanted the money. I feel like the main reoccurring theme throughout this documentary, throughout talking about John and Kate plus eight and the downfall of the show and the downfall and the breakup of the relationships is that money ruins everything. But maybe not even money ruins everything. I think that if you are a poor quality person before you have money, once you have money, those poor qualities only come through that much more. Well, at this point, it's extremely clear to any adult with a lick of common sense and a lick of critical thinking capabilities that the family, but more specifically the children, were being exploited for the sake of financial gain. The kids could not consent to being on the show. They had no autonomy and they had no authority. In the two years that they were filming with TLC, they filmed over 80 episodes, which is absolutely insane to me. This must have been violating child labor laws because whenever the camera is rolling and the crew is around, the kids are technically working. People started to complain so much. The state opens an investigation into the show for possible child labor violations. The case was closed and nothing ever came from it. You don't find that suspicious? I feel like there's no way. There's absolutely no way for eight kids to be filming every single day except for two days and that not be violating some sort of labor law. Just say you don't care about kids and keep them moving. In the midst of all of this, John Goslin moves to New York City to enjoy all the advantages his fame and money can buy. John is being shown in the public, being out, partying, drinking, the whole nine yards with random women, and he was just really being vilified. 
but honestly maybe like a little bit rightfully so because john himself he says that i'll admit i was really poor at handling all of that and he actually reverted back into the 19 year old self that he was before meeting kate and having eight kids he was spending hella money but he says as fast as he was spending it it was coming right back in as fast as i spent it it was just recuperating because the show was super popular now that things were messier than ever he says that this phase of his though only lasted about six months but it did go against TLC's family friendly image and he says that he has spent every moment since then trying to make up for the damage done to his image within those six months. To me though, it's absolutely wild that he left Kate by herself to raise eight kids so he could go and party. While I do think that Kate was a fame hungry and money hungry woman, it's aggravating to me that men and women do this as well, but mostly men get to just abandon their kids, go off, gallivant, and leave the children to be taken care of by somebody else when they're also your children. How do you just leave your children for six months so you can go party and act like you're 19 years old? You have eight kids, my guy. But despite John wilding out and damaging his family-friendly image, TLC wanted John and Kate to still stay together for the sake of the show, even though they had announced that they're getting a divorce. John said, hell no, I am not doing that. TLC said, you have to film though. And John said, I don't have to film anything. I don't have to do anything. You can't make me, which they kind of could because I think Mr. John forgot he was under contract. Kate wants the show to go on. Again, she wants to secure her bag. She wants to secure her fame. So she goes and sets up an only on reality TV proposition. She actually, and I think TLC helped her out with this too. They set up a meeting with her, with John and Dr. Phil. And Kate and Dr. Phil were trying to convince John to sign some paperwork so that they could pretend to be married on camera. Dr. Phil's like, well, just stay married on TV and do your own thing on the side. And John said, I am not doing it. I'm absolutely not doing this. I'm not gonna lie to everybody. I'm not gonna lie to my family. I'm not gonna lie to the world. And like, I'd imagine in the meeting, he didn't say this, but in my mind, it's like he looks at Kate and he's like, what is wrong with you? We don't wanna be together, but you want us to pretend that we are together for the sake of the show? For the sake of some money? For the sake of exploiting our family? What is wrong with you? And in this moment when he said that Kate did this, I could kind of see why they got divorced because I couldn't imagine being married to someone or being with someone who thought that this level of deception was okay for any reason. So when that offer didn't work... The network offered him about 2.1 million to stay filming. And he said no. John says that his goal was to healthily co-parent the kids, but since he didn't bend to the will of Kate and the will of TLC, they just dropped him from the show. They decided to relaunch the series as Kate plus eight. After John was dropped from the show, he decided that the kids shouldn't be filming. I don't think it's healthy for them, and I think my kids should be taken off the show. Sir? Obviously, the kids should not be filming. Like, that's a given. They're so little. They don't need to be doing this. But only now he's taking that stance. Only now, after they dropped him from the show, he decides that the kids shouldn't film. To me, that is very suspicious. Kate wanted to continue filming with the kids, obviously. And I didn't want to continue filming with the kids. Now, essentially what John wanted didn't matter because Kate wanted to keep filming with the kids. She says that she needed the show to continue because it provides opportunities for the family that they wouldn't otherwise have. She also says that John shared that belief until they dropped him from the show. And I really want to argue with her here, but unfortunately I can't. Because of their very public dispute and John's refusal to film and his refusal to allow the kids to film, TLC had no choice but to halt production. TLC then goes and sues John for breach of contract and they settle it out of court. Part of this settlement was that John was not allowed to talk in the press directly for about 10 years and he wasn't allowed to appear on TV for five years amongst a bunch of other things that they didn't mention. In November of 2009, John and Kate plus eight air their final episode. Kate says that she- It's sad. It's needless. It's useless. Um, it, you know, it was totally avoidable. She didn't say those things about the ending of her marriage, but she says them about the ending of a show. So Kate is then awarded full custody of the kids. 
So she was able to do whatever she wanted with or without John's knowledge and consent. In 2010, TLC airs Kate Plus 8. They give her a whole new revamped look, but the show is basically the same, just without John this time. This is when I stopped watching, because to me, the show without John was just unappealing. I don't want to watch Kate be mean to people. I'm good on that. So TLC actually canceled Kate Plus 8 in 2011, but Kate was determined to stay in the spotlight. She started appearing on a bunch of other shows such as The View, Dancing with the Stars, Celebrity Apprentice, amongst basically anywhere else who would give her a bag for appearing. At this point though, I really believe that she had to have been doing all of this for the love of attention, fame, and to get back at John because she had more than enough money. Sidebar though, just like a random thought that I had and I didn't know where else to include it so I'm including it right here. Did John and Kate just keep all of the money from the show? Was money put aside in trust for the kids? Did kids have access to that money once they turned 18? Was any money saved for them at all? Like they were making millions, they were making big bank and the show would not have been possible without the kids. So in my mind, the kids, that's kind of the kids money. But they don't make any mention of that. But my question is, where's the kids cut of the money, Kate? So in 2015, TLC brings back Kate Plus 8. I don't know what changed, but I think it's because she was still in mainstream consciousness and she was holding her own in society, basically. So they're like, mm, we could probably make some more money, come back. But this time around, we see Colin get the brunt of the frustration that was previously directed at John. Colin says that he believes that his mom was just going through a lot. I want to think that she needed someone to, to, to take out her anger and her frustration on. She chose me. Colin then begins to quote unquote rebel, but I don't even really see it as rebelling. I just think that he was coming into his own. He didn't want to live his life on camera anymore. He did not want to be on camera at all. So he would just do what John was doing when he didn't want to be on camera. He would be physically present because he had to, but he wouldn't engage. Kate would go on to punish him for this. He would be isolated quite often. He would not be allowed to eat dinner with everybody. He would have to eat it alone. He would often not be allowed to go outside. Like he would not get to come and play outside with us. He would have to stay inside by himself. When the show returns in 2016, Colin is no longer living at home. The major difference between this party and every other birthday party was the fact that Colin wasn't here. When news of this broke, I watched for this specific episode to see what happened to Colin to explain why he was shipped off, where he was, but then I stopped watching again. And I was also wondering why he was sent away because nothing seemed to be wrong with any of the kids. They seemed to be great despite the weird circumstances that they were growing up in. So where was he and what happened? So we then find out that at 12 years old, Kate got Colin diagnosed with a behavioral disorder and sent him off to Fairmount Behavioral Health System. This is a psychiatric hospital in Philly, and they currently have a Google rating of 1.9 stars. Now, the Google reviews are telling, to say the least. A review posted says that the staff were really rude. They would ignore kids and make fun of them. The food was nasty, you don't get fresh air. They also lost my daughter's clothes. If I could give this place zero stars, then I would. Another review says that I was sent here against my will. The kids were nice and didn't give me any problems. I witnessed a fight break out at least once every other day. The staff were nice to me, but they were devils to other kids. I witnessed them curse at kids, restrain them with excessive force, and when the kids are out of control, they would forcefully sedate them. Some of the kids that were restrained complained of back and arm pain after being restrained by three staff. They honestly don't do much to help you. They didn't offer real therapy services. I wouldn't recommend this place to anyone. Another states that the facility is harmful and does more damage than good. They say that it will take years to undo the lasting traumatic effects caused here. As others have stated, this is not a place for a loved one. I wouldn't wish this place upon my worst enemy. And that is where Kate sent her 12 year old because he would not listen to her, because he would not obey her orders to appear the way she wanted him to on television. 
Kate says that I was not able with my own resources to meet his needs. Be fucking for real. At this point, girl, you are a millionaire. What do you mean? You could have access to the resources. Colin, however, says that this actually happened because he began to tell teachers at school how his mother was abusing him. So when the teachers communicated to Kate what Colin was telling them, she knew that she had to isolate him further. I had to put me somewhere where I wouldn't be able to get the secrets out. Basically, she did this to protect her reality TV bag, protect her image. She isolated and gaslit her son to the 10th degree and she sent him away without consulting or even telling his father what was happening. You have to be a next level of sick to do something like this to your own kid. To this day, she denies all abuse allegations, which is not particularly shocking. Colin says that being in the facilities took a toll on him. And yes, I say facilities with an S, but we'll get to that in a second. He says that he had no support system. It was a really, really dark place. It was scary. And for the first time in his entire life. You know, all I had was myself. I didn't have anybody else. Kate Plus 8 continued to air while no one but Kate knew where Colin was. John found out that Colin was missing when he went to the kids' school to have lunch with all of them because he says that was one of the only times that he was able to just see all his kids uninterrupted. So he asked, like, where's your brother? Where's Colin? And they don't say anything which really scared me. I'm like, where's your brother? So he goes to the guidance counselor and he's like, where is my son? And she's like, oh, he's not enrolled here anymore. John's like, what do you mean? He's not enrolled here anymore. She says, but I can't talk anymore about that. Girl, what? So Kate was able to do this because John had no legal custody. And he actually had not seen his son for about a year and a half and he was trying to compel Kate to tell him behind the scenes before he went public with the information. In 2017, John received a letter from Colin which was written in crayon, giving him the address of the institution where he was at and he begs his dad to come and save him. I was scared and I was alone and you know, I needed someone to bail me out. When news of this broke, Kate? took the opportunity to relocate Colin into another facility. Further from home this time, in Pittsburgh, trying to make it more difficult to locate him. So John essentially told the kids where Colin was and what happened because nobody knew, like the kids didn't even know where he was. So when they went silent at school, it's not because they didn't want to tell him, it's because they didn't know anything. And Hannah said, The day I found out, I said, I'm not going home. Like, I'm not going back to her house. John went back to court. He filed an emergency petition to change custody and he got full parental custody of Hannah and she moved in with him. I never in my wildest dreams ever thought I would get cust full custody of a kid. Ever, ever. Which is absolutely wild because y'all got eight of them. I think just like Colin, John was aware of how controlling Kate was. He knew that she was not going to give up any of the kids because then that would mess with the show. It can't be Kate plus eight if some of the eights are missing. But I also think that this is wild because in my mind, I believe that Kate got full custody because she was able to frame it as if John would not be a good parent, as if he would be an inadequate parent. But in reality, this shows, especially his willingness to take Hannah and his determination to get Colin, shows that he was well equipped and more than willing and capable of being an active and present father. John figured out on his own where Colin was at for the second time. He called them and said that he was coming to get his son, who had not seen a parent in almost two years at this point because Kate wasn't going to visit him. He had not spoken to his siblings. He hadn't spoken to anybody outside of the facility. When John arrives, he's on a lot of medication. And then I go to his doctor. I'm like, why is my son here? What is his diagnosis? And the doctor says he doesn't have one yet. This child has been in the facility for so long and he is on medication. What are you medicating him for? if he doesn't have a diagnosis. After John sees him this day, he then goes back to court. Psych evals, testimony. I spent a million dollars getting my son out. Everything I had, I spent. To get Colin out of there and to get full custody, and he ended up doing both of those things. Kate used this situation to create a permanent rift between Colin and all of the other kids. They don't talk to Colin. They decided to 
not have a relationship with him. Colin says that he last spoke to his siblings in 2016 and he also believes that Kate intentionally drove a barrier between them. In 2019, TLC aired a special of Kate Plus 8, which followed the twins, the eldest twins, as they were going off to college. It's wild to me that they continued filming and they were airing episodes, still working with Kate, despite the clear mistreatment Colin had faced. Because he was literally the only child who refused to fall in line. So she got rid of him. But I guess TLC didn't care about that because Colin out of the picture made filming for them a lot easier. In my opinion. By the end of 2020, they canceled the show once again. John does not have access to the other kids. I have no idea why they stopped coming. I have no answers, like none. It's the worst. And they don't speak to him and he doesn't know why, but it's obvious it's because of Kate, in my opinion. John says once the show ended and he was cut off, he just went back to living a normal life. He just went back to work in IT. Kate sold their giant Pennsylvania home in 2021, moved to North Carolina, renewed her nursing license, and has dropped out of the public eye. Which is interesting to me because now that there are valid criticisms of you coming forward, your own child calling you out for what you've done, you no longer want to be famous. Okay. Colin says that despite everything his mom did, she has a good heart and she had good intentions. But um, TV and fame and money changes people. And while I absolutely understand what he's saying, I think that TV, money and fame changes you only if you do not have strong character before those things come into play. But I think if you know who you are and you're consistently a good person, then having fame, having money, those things, it's not going to change you because you know who you are, you're grounded and you're rooted in who you are. I think it's a shame that throughout this entire time, no one was really thinking about the kids and their well-being. Everyone was just thinking about themselves. And when one person finally did start to think about the kids, although John only started to do it after he was dropped from the show, nobody took him seriously because of the timing after he was wilding out and after TLC had decided that they're not going to give him a bag anymore. John says that the show was a blessing and a curse. Now, it's important to note that Kate declined to be interviewed for this documentary. She did not respond to our producer's requests. It's interesting now that when a serious documentary is being made that is going to be critical of her and John's actions by a network who she has no relationship with, who she has no pull with, she's not interested. I feel like that in and of itself is super telling. And Colin spoke out for the first time himself in late 2022, speaking out about the fact that he had gotten into a really bad car wreck. Did your mom or any of your siblings get in touch with you after the accident? No, I, I didn't hear anything from any of them. I'd imagine a big reason why he even did the interview in the first place was because he was hoping that they would reach out to him, make sure that he was okay, and just reconnect with him. He says that if his siblings were watching, he would want them to know that I love them to death. He hopes they can reconnect, put the show behind them, be siblings again. Take back that time that we didn't have. This documentary to me is so heartbreaking. I think it just goes to show the real harm of putting your kids on reality TV, or I guess now what would be the harms of family channels, family vlogging. I think it's important for parents to be mindful of how it can impact their kids and how it can impact their relationship with their kids because it now looks like six of John's kids will never speak to him ever. And it looks like six of Colin's siblings will never speak to him again. And he will never have a relationship with his mother now. And Kate is not going to take any public accountability for what she did, neither will TLC because at the end of the day, all that they cared about was money. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, then make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe and turn on that bell and make sure to leave me a comment to share what your thoughts were about all of this. You can also find the link to the documentary in the description if you would like to watch it for yourself. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.